Trying to decide whether that new game is worth your $60? Or maybe you're just wondering if an old game is worth your time. Well, you came to the right place. This is the only podcast that tries to answer the question. Should I buy it, though? Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Should I Buy It, Though? I'm wow, <laughs> And I'm wow, And I'm TJ. And I'm Crash Bandy's Cooch. You got it wrong! God what? damn it. Oh, smash, smash Brandy's, Brandy's Cooch. I'm sorry, guys. Damn. <laughs> like, this is and like a I'm... Whoa! <laughs> I'm sorry, who, who are you? <clears throat> Whoa! Okay, thank you. Do it again. And we're playing... And now... Uh, and we're bu- and we're today, we're reviewing the new Crash Bandicoot 4. Yeah. It's about time game, not... Yeah. Not the, the new porno. first person shooter shoot 'em up br- brand uh, JRPG. Uh anywho, uh so yeah, we're gonna be talking about Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time. Uh and let's open this episode uh by announcing uh congratulations to the winner of our Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time uh, giveaway, even though we gave it away a while ago at this point, but uh to one thick boy on Reddit. Oh. Congratulations. <laughs> Congrats on winning the game and on the a thickest great game. of boys. That's just now that's, that's one thick boy. That's, you won. You deserve more ways that. Than you one. deserve the win. All right. Um, so for context, uh, I'm a Crash lover, but I did not get to play the game yet. Uh, I know Crash, <laughs> but as as the same way as I know the. Florida man. I don't really know him, just know of him. You just kind of feel him, you know? He's always yeah. there. Jeez. Yeah. I played it. Cool. <laughs> I I did not play it. And I've never played it, so. Uh I played it. I didn't beat it. I played I think half of it. I don't know. Um I played the Insane Trilogy a few years ago, all of them. Almost platted the first game. It's a lot of fun. And I played one of the originals. I think I played the original third game uh way back when. Nice. But yeah, I'm a big Crash fan. I thought we were just talking fun. about four, bro. I was around we are just back in four. my day. Well, he's talking about like the Insane Trilogy. Was like back in my day. Crash Bandicoot came out and I played the demo back in 1996. Is well, that really when it came out? Yeah. yeah I was like, I so. six. We got to respect Five? the Bandicoot lore, baby. Respect the Bandicoot. Uh, there's actually, I mean, we're not going to get into it right now, but like, there's crazy, like, if you look at the stuff, Crash Bandicoot was like a m- technological miracle at the time. Like they had to pull some crazy hacks on the original PlayStation to like get it to run at all. Uh, it's it's really interesting. There's some YouTube videos on it that are like su- I, I implore anyone who's like just like interested in the tech of the time. Uh, I forgot what it's called, but it's something with the original developer talking about how they like they used system memory that they technically weren't allowed to use in order to render like the polygons and stuff. So. Uh, Crash Bandicoot, he's a cool guy. Um, five. <laughs> Naughty Dog are gods on the technical front. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they, they kind of continue to be, if we're being honest. Yeah, yes. Uh, wow. Cool. So, uh, I was so hyped for this game, and I ended up not being able to play it because I was busy uh, playing Squadrons for the review. Uh, so, I'm very interested to hear from you guys what you think and see if it colors my opinion. Uh Let's just open with like gameplay. How does this compare to like other Crash games? All right, so first and <laughs> oh foremost, boy. I did not want to play this game. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've never been interested in playing a Crash Bandicoot game. 3D platformers oh, are not heart. necessarily my thing. Um, although I did enjoy playing Spyro. Uh, but this is actually a fun game. I'll give you that. Um, I enjoyed playing it. I died a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, yep. But I, yeah, if you watched the one stream I did where there was one, one point, mind you, the levels are not long. I died over 17 times. And I was like, yep. and it keeps track. And I don't know why it keeps track for you, but cool. 
But um, <laughs> it's a 3D platformer. Um, most of it you play like going forward, uh, as opposed to like going around. Like you can walk side to side, but most of the game takes place that you following a track either forward or back uh, towards or away from the camera, if, if you so will. Um, but it plays nice. Like it was cool. I like I like playing it. It's actually fun. It's really simple to play. Um, they did throw in like a bunch. I don't know if they had similar mechanics in the older crash games but in this one um you basically meet there's a character named aku aku who's a floating mass you meet his cousins and each of them has a different yeah, power my boy. so they give you like different gameplay aspects to use as well which adds to stuff like um uh the one that i thoroughly enjoyed was uh, i don't know his name but like it phases boxes and stuff so when you hit the button, mm -hmm. uh, which I had to remap because the button map was just weird. Sometimes, like some of those, like you gotta like switch out your buttons. Um, but like every time you press it, it would like phase between one area to another. Um, I think like Paper Mario did that before too, where you can just like in and out kind of thing. But it was cool. I liked it. Yeah. Uh, so for me, <laughs> oh, the gameplay is the toughest part to talk about because. Uh, I'm I'm very mixed on it as of right now. Um, when I played the demo a week before the game came out, or a week or two, I was very nervous because I hated it. Um, it did not feel like Crash. At least didn't feel like the Insane Trilogy, which I had played recently. Um, and for those of you that don't know, this game was made by Toys for Bob, which did the Spyro remakes. These are not the guys that did the Insane Tri Trilogy games. Um, that was Vicarious Visions. They did the Tony Hawk games. But yeah, the double jump was a little floaty. It like stopped your momentum, which is not how Crash usually works. Mm -hmm. um, there's uh, the default setting for what shows up under Crash is a little obnoxious yellow circle to show where you're going to land. And during the demo, I'm like, why is this here? I hate it. It's obnoxious. I wish I could change it. But when the game came out, I went to the settings, and sure enough, you could change it to the traditional like little shadow effect that's under you, and you could get rid of that completely. So I'm like, okay, good job, Toys for Bob. I like that. <laughs> and um, I guess my biggest complaint was... Um, this game, I think, is different from the original Crashes because those games are infamously difficult, right? But it yeah. always felt fair to me. Mm -hmm. In this game, it felt like it was difficult for the sake of being difficult for some reason. Like with mm -hmm. the jumps, they're precise to a fault. Um, <laughs> they put in an obnoxious amount of boxes in each level, which you got to collect to get gems and stuff. And it almost made me want to not collect them yeah. um i don't know it, it's it's so weird but yet i still had fun like it, it's i i enjoy 3d platformers so i always wanted to go to the next level <laughs> but it's those little gripes where i'm like this this is not crash bandicoot but the the moments in the game where there were new mechanics introduced that were not traditionally crash bandicoot things like wearing different masks and getting different power-ups playing as different characters i'm like oh this is really fun i'm loving these sections so it, i guess i don't know if it's a good or bad thing to say the parts where it was not crash bandicoot at all i really really loved but when it was just me and the coot jumping around uh it, i struggled to get used to it a little bit hmm. i don't know yeah I, I mean, I, I watched uh, the streams. Um, I I tried not to pay attention during, like, cutscenes and stuff, even though I'm sh I, we'll talk about narrative in a second, but, you know, it's a Crash <laughs> Bandicoot game, like, whatever. That's just how I am. Uh, but it did seem like it was, a, like, a big departure from kind of the usual uh, Crash style. I did, from, like, an outsider's perspective, it looked like a departure in an exciting way. Like, it looked like there were cool things that they added. But I could see how, like, especially if you're, like, a big Crash fan, which I I would consider myself a, a Crash fan. But I, I could see how, like, if you've come to expect certain things, it, it might be a little upsetting to see some of these uh, changes. Yeah. Um, That's a good point, actually, because I was going to say, like, if this was their own game, they made their own platformer, like uh, Brash Kandakoot. 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I would probably love this because all the new mechanics they added are super clever, like stopping time and yeah. uh, phasing objects in and out or doing like a super spin, uh, having different mechanics for different characters. All that stuff is great. But I couldn't get out of the mindset of this isn't Crash Bandicoot. I want Crash Bandicoot. This sure. isn't that, you know? That makes Weird. sense. Yeah. Let's talk about some of those new mechanics because they added in quite a, a few new stuff like with uh, – even simple stuff like you you mentioned collecting gems earlier and there are different suits you can unlock for crash which i think is is cute like it's fun it's it's a cute little thing uh i love seeing the different like outfits they had for crash and all of that um but how how were these different mechanics you know because there's different like suits and like we said aku aku is usually the guy who gives you like an extra life but now there's like uh if i'm not mistaken it's like a different version of aku aku pretty much that gives you like this quantum suit that lets you like face stuff in and out there's like the pausing. Well, time, there's all of regular Agu Agu, which kind of works like the shield um, aspect, which is the same where like you can take an extra hit or whatever. And then yeah. there's like his relatives, which add like the extra powers and stuff, um, like which Lonnie is cool. Logan. I also like the aspects, like parts of the game where you don't even play as Crash. Like, um, yeah. At one point, he has like a uh, his normal love interest is a character named Tana, and they like completely change her she's an alternate reality one where she's basically like this badass like whip she's using badass like yeah. she devil just like drop kicking everything and i loved it it was great yeah. um because i haven't like i don't have that kind of connection to crash i think i probably enjoyed it a little bit more uh just because sure. i'm not like like i don't have that nostalgia so i was just like this is really cool like i like this uh as opposed to just like go around just jump on these guys spin here Try not to get blown up by TNT for the 25th million times. Um, so that was kind of cool. And then, like, they add a bunch of stuff in it. Like, there are, um, like, retro levels we can go back. And I guess you learn a little bit more about, like, the story and about, like, the characters themselves kind of stuff. And just, like, yeah. like, like little bits in here and there. Like, uh, the very first one I encountered, which isn't really a thing, but... Um, you basically play as like a level in there in the factory because the whole thing is like Crash is genetically modified by like the villain yeah. and stuff. And I was like, I didn't know that. So that was kind of cool. And like they have like the goofy bits thrown in here and there with like uh, while you're running and they'll have like car- like enemies talking to you and stuff like that, like taunting you and like yeah. encourage you to go on and stuff. I thought it was weird that everybody in the game talked but Crash, but you know. That's neither here nor hey, there. Crash says whoa. <laughs> he says whoa. <laughs> uh, I actually thought that was uh, that was one of the most interesting things uh, when they first announced the game is the fact that you get to play as Neo Cortex. How was that? Uh, cool. I mean, not just Neo Cortex. You could like TJ said, play as what's her name, Tani. Um, uh, you play as her. You play as a bunch Coco. of different characters in the Crash universe. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All those. Um, Nefarious was interesting because he had a laser gun and a dash move. Um, the laser gun, you shoot it once and you create like a platform out of enemies and you shoot it the second time and then you make like a bouncy platform out of that cool. same enemy. Um, d- uh, different cool, innovative little things I did here and there. Uh, the Tani had a, a grappling hook, which I love. So that was fun. She was more like a kickboxer in a way rather than crash's traditional spin um i was gonna say the my favorite parts were actually the boss fights because that's where they really showed off the new mask mechanics the one against i think it was engine or something where you're um he's doing like a heavy metal concert and you have to jump in between drums to like get to him and you're phasing drums in and out um the music in this game's great especially during those boss fights so um, those moments I thought were a ton of fun. I thought those were the highlights. Um, there's there's a ton of cool stuff. It seemed like there was a multiplayer mode too, right, TJ? There is. There's a um, online and there's also a local. Yeah, what I didn't is try that. that like? So like local is kind of cool because it's more like the um, like pass the controller kind of thing. Like you die, you pass the controller, and like your whoever's playing with you picks up a different character and they run through it. Or, like, each of you will run through a level and whoever gets to it faster, like, wins, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, like, almost like that old retro, like, Mario and Luigi kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, cool. and the retro levels that TJ was talking about, it <laughs> lore wise, it's like you're going back in time to the nineties when um what's his name? The main bad guy. Um Cortex. Nitro Cortex Cortex yeah. was experimenting on Crash and he has him going through these trials of jumping on boxes all the way to the end. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, it was fun. It was cute. And those actually were the levels that I loved the most because yeah, they were tough as nails, but they felt the most like classic crash. Sure. Uh the secret levels in the original games where you're just jumping on boxes till the end. Um, and they throw bonus levels really in fun. every level. So like, you get that, like, it took, like, I feel like, I don't know if that was in the original, but it took, like, a lot of elements that I think from, like, Mario, and they were like, we're going to do this, we're going to do this Crash version, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Ton of content, yeah. Um, Lots of I content. saw that there's, like, there's a death counter now, pretty much. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you still have the game over screen, like, in traditional Bandicoot? No? So, there yes. are two modes to the game. Um, there's the version that I played on, so I can get through it. Where you just keep playing and you basically like respawn at like checkpoints almost. And then yeah. there's like the original where you have like infinite lives, but they obviously reward you for dying less. And then there's like yeah. the OG version where there's like you have X amount of lives. If they're gone, you got to restart from the beginning of the game. The beginning of the game or the level? Oh, sorry. Level, the level, level. The level. Oh, oh. I was like, what? The level. That's what I there's, did. There's 43 levels in the that. game. If they had to do that, I would quit. I switched uh, to that mode immediately because that's what that not just what Crash Bandicoot is. That's what classic 3D platformers were yeah. having lives and like you die when it runs out. I was a little I'm mixed on the whole making it easier uh, for people thing. Like I get people just want to play the game casually and get through it, but I'm also like no, like make it like it's supposed I don't, to I don't, be. I don't I don't want to get into this argument with you, but we literally uh, for those watching. <laughs> We've had like a half hour argument about this, like regarding Dark Souls and making yeah. it easier mode. And I'm like, you don't have to play it. It doesn't affect you. Who cares? Uh, and so definitely, I actually really like to hear that because uh, like when I played like the original Crash, like one of the most annoying things was when you're doing the bridge level and like I get a game over screen, like just after a certain amount of time, I'm like, okay, yes, I get it. Game over. Can I, can you stop like interrupting my gameplay just to like say game over and make like just let me play the game so i'm glad to hear that that's there for someone like me there is uh, a I choice guess. yes yeah. <laughs> and there are certain parts where you'll be like and like even if you, you caught me on stream and i'll be like up oh, and i died and like why did that happen I'm like up oh, and then he yeah okay and then like oh and then he caught me so like if i had to like restart the level with that every time like me on a personal level i just would have been like yeah i'm not doing this bro well, yeah, I, I think that's the biggest barrier for this kind of thing for, like, a number of people. I know for, like, myself, after a certain amount of game overs, like, you get far enough that then when it's, like, I got to go back and do it. Even if I can do it easily, I'm just, like, I'm going to turn this off until, yeah. like, tomorrow. I, like, I that kind of thing is more fun for, like, rogue games, but when you're facing the same thing over and over again, it is Yeah, exactly. It's just... With this game, I'm mixed on it, though, because, yeah, I want that um, the death mechanic in there. I want the game over screen because I want it to be hard for people. But also, I mentioned a little bit earlier that it almost felt too hard. Like, it's like they made the game knowing that the original Crash Bandicoot games were hard. So they're like, oh, we got to make this game even harder because that's what Crash fans want. But in trying to do that, they almost um, did it artificially rather than it coming across organically, I guess. Um, because there's a lot of times I'm like, it, it kind of feels like bullshit rather than a challenge, you know? And it's hard to describe yeah. what I'm trying to say without people actually physically playing it. Yeah, um, yeah. and the levels were long, like absurdly long. I didn't like that either. Um, they, like they, they got tiring after a while. It's like the complaint I had with Doom Eternal. I'm like, if you just shorten this by like a few minutes, I would be a lot more on board with this concept, but yeah. it sort of wore you out after a while. And I agree with Where that. I couldn't like, play more than like three in levels in a fights. session. Yeah. Because like, TJ? even like how Palaza brought up earlier with like the one uh, level where you fight the guy in the drums and he's the boss. Like, it's a great like boss battle. Like, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. But like, you gotta be like extra precise on that. Like, jump here, dodge here, dip here, beat this enemy. And then like, Cause like usually like you find the enemy you gotta hit him like x amount of times and each time you hit him it gets harder and then like it gets harder to get to him it gets harder to do this you like you gotta be like following patterns you gotta be like super on your p's and q's and then felt like a final boss fight honestly yo for real and that was like the second boss <laughs> <Dang>. <laughs> yeah 
But it's it was nuts. cool. I loved it. It was the cool. The level design it, it in was, this game is great. It was really cool. I mean, but that's... like, it's hard. <laughs> yeah. If I had to guess, that's probably why they made that change in the way that death works, because they they were probably aware that oh, they definitely. knew it was hard. It was a different approach. Yeah. Yeah. Um. The, my favorite level was actually the first level because it threw in a lot of classic Crash Bandicoot obstacles at you, like with the spinny wheels going back and forth, and yeah. you start on a beach. Um, on the beach, there was two Easter eggs. There was a Spyro inflatable floaty in the water oh. if you went yeah. to the right, so that was cool. And then there was a little TV. If you hit it once, it started playing the music from Crash 1. If you hit it again, it played the music from Crash 2, then Crash 3. And then if you hit it one more time, it went to the Crash 4 music. So That's really cool. cool. I like that. That is pretty cool. Yeah. That's cute. That was a cool level. Yeah. Uh, Any other, like, cool details and that sort of thing in this game? Or, like... Uh, The inverted levels? TJ, I don't know if you got to those, but there's, like, Mm -hmm. a mirror mode where you play through the levels, but there's, like, little different things they throw at you, like... You played in black and white, or you played in the opposite direction. I, I didn't get to play around with that too much, but from what I heard and saw, there it's basically do the same levels again in a different way uh, with an extra challenge thrown in if it wasn't already challenging. And I think I heard somewhere, TJ, correct me if I'm wrong, I think the people that made the Crash Racing game worked on those levels, the the mirror mode levels. I, heard, I think I heard that too, actually, yeah. So that's kind of cool. They got a different team to do those. So uh, the game looks great is because um, I don't think either you guys said neither of you had, had finished uh, the game. Hmm. I read that it was only eight hours long, though, but like it was added on to because of uh, some of the different like, mo- like, can you speak to kind of what? Uh, like so how like, long did you play the game, and what did you spend time doing? Like, what? so like uh, a good example of it is there are forty three levels in the game. Um, okay. On stream, I think I played for like two hours, and I got through about twelve of those levels. Oh wow! Okay. So, like, play that as you, and that's with me like dying and not on a setting where I have to go back to the beginning of the game. Yeah. Which realm are you in? Which uh, um, reality? <laughs> I think I stopped after, like, the pirate one. Okay, I think I'm at the pirate one, and I feel like it took me, to, uh, like, five hours to get there. Yeah, but I'm a completionist, we're playing so I two went back and I replayed, a, I, I replayed a bunch of the levels to try to get all the gems. Because uh-huh. you got to get gems for collecting a bunch of uh, fruit. Wampa fruit? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yeah. Wampa. Uh, you got to get through the level without dying uh more than three times you got to get a hidden gem and then there was something else you got to do so i went back and tried to collect all of those oh yeah. get all the boxes that's the and last that's one. like the thing so there are 43 levels quote unquote levels in the campaign itself to beat the story but like that doesn't mean that you're gonna have <clears throat> all the gems from each level that doesn't mean that you completed all the bonus levels that doesn't mean you have all the characters it doesn't mean that you did all the inverted you didn't that doesn't even mean you touched the inverted levels or the retro levels. So there are like plenty, plenty, like, like the replayability on it is like crazy high just because of that, which is like interesting because before I was just like, this is $60 and I'm paying like an eight hour game. Like, why am I doing that? But like after seeing like all the extra stuff in it, like it kind of makes more sense. I still wish it was a little less money, but like it makes sense because like I think overall there's over a hundred. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so, so what I'm hearing is like for someone like me, uh, if you've been following us and you kind of know who you like align with gameplay wise, someone like me, I'm probably only going to get like eight, maybe 10 hours out of the game. Someone it's... like Palazzo will probably get like, you know, easy double digits, maybe yeah. if depending on it how depends. bad you are or how high the difficulty is. Because you could get like the eight to 10 hours and then I don't know, like, John, you might really like it and decide like, no, I really want this costume. So I'm going to play it a little more so I can get the these gems here. Or like, I really like these um, inverted levels. So I might play these. Yeah. So you might get a couple of hours, extra hours. I did. It. Yeah, I. I, I did that exact thing that TJ said during stream. There was a pirate outfit I saw that Crash could get. I'm like, I'm getting that pirate outfit, and it, I'll stay in this level for however long it takes. And I ended Man. up doing it like two or three times, and I got the pirate outfit. I'm like, this is what's remaining on Crash Bandicoot for the rest of my playthrough. And you can even go back and be like, I want to play road. all these again as a different character, and then go do that 
Because, like, unless yeah. you can start out as, like, Crash, or you can play as his younger sister, Coco. And Coco, so then you're yeah. like, all right, now I want to go back and play as Coco. Or, like, I remember she had, like, this artsy outfit that I saw at one loading screen. And then one of the levels, like, you can get this. So I'm like, all right, now I got to go back and get these gems because she looks all cute like that. It's certainly the longest Crash game because 43 levels, I think TJ said, that's yeah. longer than the first game. I think that's longer than the second one, and it's longer than the third. So you'll still get a good amount of time out of it um, comparatively to the other ones. But if you're just blazing through the levels, you'll knock it out quick. Yeah. Okay. And there is that multiplayer aspect, too. Yeah. Uh, and I just like, I think- uh, uh, like for me, for someone like me, uh, the, the replayability aspect is it is like nigh on impossible to get me to replay something I've already done unless there's like a significant change. Like, you know, like if yeah. I want to play with friends, like that's something else. But like if it's just me on my own, like I will almost never go back to like yeah. do a level I've already if done. If you're looking for the story, like- you're only going to get like eight or ten out of it. But if you're – especially if you're trying to hit every level, then you can tackle on another like four hours or so. Yeah. That's that's but- the bad part about this game I think because of that reason. I'm someone who loves collecting stuff and getting like everything there is to get in a game. But this game almost makes me want to not do that because the levels are so long. Um, some of the platforming is a little absurd. Yeah. Boxes are hard to find sometimes. They put it in mean places that – um, it's not even a matter of do you know the mechanics enough to get to this high ledge. It's like can your eyeballs make out where the hidden box is, and that is very discouraging to go back through these long ass levels, knock yeah. out two hundred boxes to try to get those gems. And again, I had to like remap the controller yeah. just to like give my fingers the dexterity to make like some of those like fast movements and stuff. So True. like you're using with- every button in this game. Yo, facts. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do, does uh, playing as different characters, does it have a significant difference on the way that, you know, a level, like, maps out, basically? Or is it just, like, you know, slight, like, flavor changes? I mean, like, all the me- all the levels are the same. It's just, like, you're... It's like some of it is, like, slightly different. I mean, like, it depends, right? So, when you're playing as, like, Crash or Coco, all the levels are the same. Um, when they give you a character to play as, when like you don't choose which one it is, and they yeah. give you a character, that level is built specifically for that character. Yeah, you can yeah. only play it for that character. And a good instance okay. of that is okay. um, when Tawn is first introduced. She has that grappling hook. No one else has a grappling hook. Only she can like zip through the level like that. And so you'll play it as that. But like they give a story reason why you can only levels. use them. I guess that was my question because, you know, we look at a game like Avengers where you have the ensemble of characters and they can all play any mission. So the problem is that a lot of the missions kind of get uh, turned to, like, vanilla down so that you can play it with any character. Yeah. Uh, But it seems like this game, you know, gives you some freedom but still, you know, locks certain areas off in the interest of, like, having variety. Yeah, it's pretty linear. the, The mechanics of those characters are pretty different. Yeah. Like, Cortex, like it's a whole different move set that you gotta you gotta master to get through the level. And the thing about the Cortex levels too, which is cool, is um you play a level as Crash, and Cortex interferes in some way. Like in one of the levels, uh. he blows up a ship, a pirate ship that's in front of you, and creates obstacles. Then you go play a Cortex level. He's going through it. Everything seems like you know usual Crash fanfare. And then you get to the end of the level, and you see him blowing up that ship in the crash level so you're like oh now i know how that happened that's fun and then you jump back and play as crash through the rest of that level again so it's it's pretty cool yeah i like those moments i guess that brings me to like my next thing and kind of like the last big question i have is like what's kind of what's like the the plot like in this game is there really something to follow is it just like a little excuse to throw levels together or are there Uh, no there's like a whole plot together i think you're saving the multiverse then that's basically okay. it like cortez is working with some other dude um the guy from crash and, three yeah and then like obviously like they have their like minions and stuff and then like they have a whole like plot thing going on and crash's whole thing is just like he was living his life going about everything and next thing you know his boy aku aku is like yo that's my cousin like what's going on and they're like yo we need help 
Um, and uh, then like there's like there's these rifts open up, and then we're like, all right, let's jump through these rifts and let's go save people. It felt like a Nickelodeon cartoon. Okay, <laughs> like it did. Like it, it's a very, that would be a very like Nickelodeon esque plot where they're like jumping through sure. alternate realities and seeing their other friends. Yeah, as Nick would say, it's cute. <laughs> it's cute. Okay. <laughs> Uh, it looks, speaking of cute, it looks pretty good. Like, the animation style, I, I like how it looks visually. It's the best-looking Crash game, I think. It's yeah. gorgeous. How'd it run? It, it ran fine for me. I didn't have any yep. problems. It ran perfectly fine. No issues. Which is I will fantastic. say that is, like, the cutest way to die, like, in the most graphic ways. <laughs> um, like, there's, like, Crash one character. Crash has the most brutal deaths. Oh, my oh, God. Yeah. There was, like, one character who was, like, a crab who had, like, one of those like wooden barrels on his back full of blades and like one of his things would be like take it off and just put it on top of your head and then you just oh drop. Oh my god. It's nuts. When I, I jumped into the water at one point, Crash like went into it and then like his body slowly floated up face down. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> and then it cut to black. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Wow. <laughs> but it's like it's also like super goofy and like they have like a bunch of cheap jokes and stuff. And, like, all the characters are, like, amped up, like, caricatures and stuff. Like, yeah. it's, it's really cool. Any other questions? Any other questions from anyone else? Or Honestly, no. I I feel like the game... Like, I watch the streams, and I feel like just from watching it, I, I get it. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It does look fun, though. It does look... Again, it, it, it looks really cute. Yeah, there's nothing really I, hidden. I, like, I what you so. see is... Pretty much what you get, but like playing it yeah, is a lot of fun. No, you don't understand. You have to put the headset on. You just don't understand. <laughs> you just got to put the headset on, and then like until you're you need to be fully immersed. You got to be a soup. Yeah, you don't got to be a big cute. super crash fan. You just got to put the headset on. And you'll be fully immersed. <laughs> One, oh. when you see oh. all the details on his shoelaces, then like you're really gonna. When you see every voice. little bandicoot running around you. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, uh, um, TJ, I'm curious. Th- oh, sorry, go ahead. No, sorry. The one thing I was going to say is even though I had a complaint that this doesn't feel like Crash, you could tell that Toys for Bob really, they care about Crash because they they did their homework on the, the original games in terms of what 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 people liked about some of those games because it seemed like they took little bits and pieces from each one and translate it into their own product which was cool like uh the mechanics of crash 2 um the level design of crash 3 sort of the map format in crash 1 a lot of different things like that and mashed it all together and i respected them for um tackling that and they really they seem to put a lot of love and care into the game which is cool sure. Nice. Respect T- the coot. TJ, my, uh, th- the thing I'm curious, because you and I were kind of talking about it a little bit before we recorded, where, like, uh, it's weird because I'm a big fan of Crash, even though I don't really like platformers all that much. Yeah. Uh, and I know you particularly, like, you weren't even necessarily interested in playing this game. Yeah, Do you I think really this did. game is play. accessible to people who, like, are not necessarily platforming fans, or not really? Um, so... For even people who aren't necessarily platforming um, fans, they can have fun playing the game. Um, but it's all a trade-off on, like, do you not like platformers or are you not good at platformers? Because this game sure. is hard. And, yeah. like, like while it's not, like, Demon Souls hard, it's just, like, it's, like <laughs> it's difficult and it can get a little frustrating. And, it, sure. and, it, and like Palazzo said, like, it, it, sometimes it really does feel like bullshit. Like, um, right. like a lot of times, like things that happen, but like, like again, like I'm one of those people who was just like, I'm surprised at how much fun I had playing this game. Like, this is one of the games I would take and like friends come over and because there's that local multiplayer, I am like, yo, like we're not doing anything. Like, let's go play crash kind of thing. Gotcha. Um, so Some of yeah, you I might not even recommend that. What TJ? Mm, no, you good. No. What? I was just saying, um, that's one of those things I would just like load up and like, all right, let's play Crash for a little bit. Yep. Oh, okay. 
I was going to say, I don't think any of you will understand this reference, but for those of you that might, um, this is kind of like the Dark Souls 2, I guess, of the Crash series where it, it is Dark Souls, but it doesn't quite feel right, you know? Um, okay. That's the best comparison I could draw. You guys won't know what that means, but for those that do, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> gotcha. Um, yeah. Oh, oh, I have one more thing. I have an interesting tidbit that I looked up. Mm. Um, so for sales uh, of this week, for those of you that don't know, we have a Star Wars episode out. Go look at that as well. It releases hey. today too. Um, this game sold more than Star Wars Squadrons. This game was number one of the week. Then Star Wars is number two. And I think freaking Mario is number three. But uh, interesting thing, neither of these games sold as well as its predecessor. So Crash Insane Trilogy sold a lot more copies than Crash 4, and then Jedi Fallen Order sold a lot more copies than Star Wars Squadrons. This isn't so I, a this isn't the Star Wars episode, but I don't I wouldn't call that a fair comparison. I also uh, feel like Squadrons was like the side project, but people who uh, bought uh, the trilogy you, at that point might have gotten like, "All right, I got enough Crash, like I have my nostalgia." Sure. Like not realizing that they basically like revitalized and like revamped the system itself. Right. Yeah, I want these guys to make their own platformer because I think they do really. That really would be a lot of it. fun. Like, yeah. and honestly, this game made me want to play um, Super Lucky's Tale, which is another like 3D platformer. Ah. I think it's for the Switch. Cool. Yeah. Uh, any last things, or do we think we might be ready to vote? No, I think we hit everything. (laughs) All right. Well, in that case, in the case of Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time. How do we vote? Am I going first? Yeah, Yeah, Mr. Barry. Um, I would say buy it. Um, I would also say maybe wait a little bit till it goes on discount. uh, Because while it's a lot of fun, $60 is still pretty steep um but like it is a fun game to play you should play it you should buy it um just maybe not at 60 dollars okay palazzo um hmm i think (laughs) i think you should buy this game um Ah. with a slight caveat if you are a massive crash fan and you're expecting this is the next big crash bandicoot game you might be disappointed like i was a little bit but if you go in as a platformer fan and you just respect that genre and are looking for a fun good game to play with cool mechanics like this is it's a solid game like i can't take it away from that i don't think it's the most solid crash game but it's a really really good game so i would say go ahead and buy it It is worth your time and And even if you don't necessarily like platformers like it's still a pretty fun game fun game it's campy, it's comical, and it has that local multiplayer that you can play with your friends, and then, like, you can shit on your friends. It's true. You can. <laughs> so, in the and it's, case and it's not of even Crash like Bandicoot oh, oh, 4, <laughs> it's about time. You should buy it, though. Yay. Yay. Wow. Yay. Wow. Nice. Uh, I had a feeling, just uh, based on Palazzo's, like, pre-show uh, demeanor, I had a feeling it was going to be a not buy, and I was ready to be sad. Uh, but I was, I was worried because then it would be like a tie. Who would be the tiebreaker. <laughs> it, it'd be us. It'd be you know with, which way they swayed us. Who you know. Uh, We'd have to have John. I'm still going to go back and play it after this. So like it did its right. job. It did its job. Yeah. <laughs> it did its job. Nice. Did you guys? Did it make you want to buy it? Do you want to buy the game? Um, Not Nick, but uh, ignoring him, the other two. <laughs> Nick doesn't like anything. so it's He like, doesn't like joy. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, I can agree with what TJ said. For 60 bucks, uh, uh, no. It should have been 40 but, yeah, but you know. Was, uh, even then, I don't know. I mean, all right. I, 40 was probably a good, it could have been a good 40 price. Make, 40, I'd be more inclined to if it were 40. I don't know if I would, but I'd be more inclined to. <laughs> Yeah. If it were forty, uh, for me under ner- normal circumstances, uh, yeah. you would have swayed me to go buy it like right now and play it. Uh, but because we, we're so busy with our shows and 
Uh, we are playing, you know, a new game to review every single week. Every week. While I do plan to buy it, I might wait until it's at least like... Even if it's just like a $5 sale, I might just wait because I'm probably not going to have the time to like sit down and play it all in one sitting. It's probably going to be like a spread yeah. out over time play. It's a good idea. So in yeah, that case, sure. I can I can probably wait for a sale. Uh, if it was, you know, normal circumstances and I didn't have a literal schedule of games to play uh, with a deadline, I'd prob- you would have swayed me to buy it, yeah. Yay. Yeah. We made uh, the Bandicoot gods happy today. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm. I'm actually really glad to hear that because, like I said, I it, I thought it was. Uh, it sounded like you were going to be disappointed, but I'm glad to hear it's a good game. Uh, I love Crash, and I'm happy to see that uh, they're they're doing right by that franchise. Uh, on that front, thank you all so much for listening. Uh, if you are listening to this episode, you like what we do, you want to support us, please uh, check out the links in the show notes. We have a Patreon where you get access to cool, exclusive content like our 24-hour reviews. Uh, we have a Kofi where for the price of a cup of coffee, three bucks, you can help support the show. And if you can't do any of that, please uh, consider leaving us a review, sharing with your friends. Go check out our other podcast, Dungeons and Drimbus. We do a D&D actual play podcast. We do some really cool stuff. Uh, we have one shots that are coming out every week and we have a full uh, main campaign that is running that's really cool. Uh, we have a Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash whimsic productions. We stream every single day. We play video games and we stream our one shots over there. So go check that out. And lastly, I want to give a very special thank you to all of our founding parents, Adriana Larcon, Juan Sorrilla, Will Williams, Ann Baird, Giovanni Sorrilla, Andrea Jimenez Neste, Claudia Costa, Marshy A, Jerry Benetados, Katrina Scott, Carolina Riverola, Alejandro Larcon, Alexia Wild, Giovanni Neste, Daniel Utset, and Zenobia Ash. Thank you all so much for supporting the show. That's so many people. I know, isn't it incredible? People yeah, love wow. us. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, ah. But thank you all so much for listening. We'll talk at you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Wow. Wow. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Were you hoping I did that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tadas is here for only one thing. <laughs> He's sitting in the back. Nick's only one with one.